you have practiced at the uh, Center of Gravity with the Center of Gravity Science in Toronto and that you that you know Michael Stone and that you were involved in editing his most recent book um, Awake in the World so how how did that happen and, and how did you switch from 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 writerly Sarah into editor Sarah and what was it like to sort of edit your teacher's work well it, I was his editor before he was my teacher. So I, I, um, I met Michael through, he was introduced to me through some mutual friends. Um, I didn't know about Center of Gravity or his connection to it. Um, I, didn't, I had never had a conversation with him before he uh, dropped his manuscript off to me. And this was, oh. um, this was a couple of years oh. back. Hmm. So, so my introduction to his work, it, I'm glad it happened this way, actually, because... Um, because because I could just go into my I feel like he uh, he he learned about me as an editor in the same way any of my students would have learned as me about me as an editor which mm. was you know I focused on the work and um, I focused on the sentences and I had no idea that he was a yoga teacher mm. I mean I didn't I I guess I kind of knew that he but everybody's a yoga teacher in Toronto so <laughs> I kind of knew that he was but it didn't it didn't affect I I had I had taught yoga teacher before and I. Been editing um, work written by uh, by yoga instructors here and there. So he the, his first piece that he um, submitted to me was um, a novel in progress, actually, and I believe it's still in progress. Hmm. And when I read it, I the first thing that I noticed about his work and in subsequent manuscripts that he'd sent to me, including his most recent one, was um, how I mean Michael's really smart and. He has an extraordinary facility with language mm -hmm. and um, and ideas, and he can speak in the realm of ideas uh, as a theorist. Mm -hmm. Really, mm -hmm. he's a theorist, mm -hmm. and um, I, I, my focus and my pull and my instruction is um, to bring people out of the the realm of ideas. An abstraction mm. and into an embodied place of seeing mm. because language I mean my this is this is why I love it's this is why I love writing um, and why it's why it's so much of a struggle at the same time is that language is incredibly efficient mm. and the English language has words for everything I mean we have a word that will wrap up like with so much precision especially when you get into places of, of jargon like um, like legal language or uh, the language of spiritual theory or the language of cultural theory. It's, it, it is jargon. I mean, it may be speaking about something that is sacred, mm. but it's jargon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my instruction was really about like, taking it out of the abstraction and bringing it to a place that's super, super, super embodied. So how does that feel? How does it feel? How does it smell? How does it sound? How does it taste? How, like these really, and that is a place... Um, it can be a very uncomfortable place. So my, when I was talking to Michael about his first draft of um, his novel in progress, which was the first thing we worked on together, I was going on and on, like I was teaching him about how to be present. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> this is what your sentences need to do. They need to be present. And then when he sent me, he just listened. Like I, we didn't have a discussion about it. I just, I gave him my, my conversation or I gave him my notes and, um, it, and, you know, talked to him about it and, he nodded and was like, "Yes," and he took notes. And then he went away. And then he, and then he came back with something. He said, "I want you to do this book." And this was a book of essays on um, spirituality and, you know, ultimately how to be present in the world. Yeah. And I was a little bit gobsmacked. And <laughs> then it was around this time that I started going to Center of Gravity and listening to him speak. Hmm. And I heard him talk about um, presentness and intimacy as creativity. Hmm which I hadn't heard in any of the meditation retreats that I've been to before Center of Gravity. I mean, that's, that's where my, my heart got stuck on Center of Gravity is that um, Michael is talking about presentness as, uh, and awareness and mindfulness as uh, part of the creative spirit, hmm. which is, I mean, that's hmm. gold. My heart just was like, yeah. finally, <laughs> one understands. This is what it is. So concurrently, so at the same time as I would be listening to these talks, which would bring me to tears like mm -hmm. every night, um, 
and I think part of that is that that I mean, Michael is speaking to his friends, like the, this is his community, and he's speaking to them. Then I was uh, reading his work, and if you've read his books, you know what I mean by yeah. his theoretical language. I mean, it's, he's very abstract, and it's yeah. it can be very very seductive to read those sentences, but it um, ultimately I feel distances you yeah. from from an embodied experience, which is the point of the book in the end. So. Mm -hmm. My instruction to him and my editing notes were all about bringing, making the book be the experience that he's writing about. Hmm. Hmm. I understand that you've also, in the past, offered um, uh, yoga and writing retreats and workshops mm -hmm. and stuff, which seems yep. like a natural pairing, um, yep. given your interests, interests and your areas um, of knowledge. So how did, how did these workshops come up and, and what happens in them? Well, I've, I've taught with three different yoga instructors now. I don't teach the yoga myself because I'm still, I'm not a yogi. I'm, I'm like, I'm still trying to build my core enough to, you know, hold plank. So I, <laughs> I, I really appreciate good, solid yoga instructors, like someone who knows the body and knows what it can do. Mm. And, um, and the first person I taught with was, was Heather Elson. Um, and that was because after two years of seeing what it had done for my own writing, I needed to just, I'm a teacher, I, I've been teaching at the same time as I've been editing mm -hmm. um, my book, so I had my students, I saw what they were struggling with, and you know, they would come to my house after a day of work, come in at 6.30 or 7 o'clock, and I'd be like, okay, forget about your whole day, and drop into writing on the page, and they really, I mean, they, they did wonderfully, and, um, and I have wonderful students and they're wonderful writers, but I could just see that how uh, bringing some yoga practice into their writing practice, mm -hmm. even if they weren't normally into that thing, could really help their writing. Mm -hmm. So I asked, just because I was experiencing it, so I asked Heather if she wanted to put something together with me, and she was so into it. Mm -hmm. And she knew, um, she just knew the same way I know my writing exercises and, and, you know, intuitively can see someone and see what they might need to work on. Mm -hmm. She can do the same thing kinesthetically um, and somatically. So she, we worked together, putting together a day that went through all the chakras from, you know, from the base and writing from like a tribal place all the way up to writing mm -hmm. about uh, themes and getting to a pretty profound place up here. And, you know, working through character, through the heart, and opening up the heart, and then doing, like, this um, pretty empathetic character work in writing. And that was a really, really great. We did a couple of those, and those were really, really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I started and then I started working with Michael. So around the set, that same time, Michael and I were working closer and closer together, and I was editing him more often, and I was attending Center of Gravity regularly. And we saw that when I, when I, talk, when I teach about writing... Um, he saw that it's the same it, the lessons that he teaches about life are very like they parallel what I teach about writing so we thought what a natural we, the, way we, the way we teach is so parallel what a natural combination so we did a few workshops together okay. in a very different scene where Michael ran his yoga class and I ran my writing class and we just hoped that the two would meet and we gave it to the students to see how okay. those would meet Um, I get the feeling that teaching is a, a really important practice to you as well, and community too. Like, I, there's a, there's a, you collaborate with people, and it seems like it happens so naturally. And, and you're really active on on Twitter. You have a, you have a newsletter that is full of great content. They're like little letters from you rather than kind of self promotional things. So, um, I guess I mean, what does community mean to you, basically? And Community means uh, means a lot to me. I think, in part, being an only child, uh, it gives me this other perspective on family. Um, so the people I find a, ge a genuine connection. When a genuine connection is made, it's very, very, very precious to me. And I uh, and I do everything I can to keep to keep things honest and keep things um, open and with integrity. And when I meet, I mean. I, the people who I've met on this in the past, you know, several years in Toronto um, have been just 
amazing, not just in Toronto, the people, I feel like the people I know, the people I have a genuine connection with are some of the best people on the planet, really. I honestly feel that. Mm -hmm. And um, I include my teachers and my students and my friends and, um, and people I've never met in person, like you, but people who are doing such extraordinary things, um, keeping, keeping the good stuff going, you know, <laughs> um, I want, I want to, I always want to be affiliated with, um, with people of integrity. And when I was teaching before my book came out, um, when I was still working on my book and I was teaching, my community was a manageable size. Um, and my classes were manageable size. I had, you know, seven to 10 people in my workshops. I taught in, I taught in my living room. So people came in my house and, um, and I wasn't on Facebook for a really long time. I wasn't. I didn't have a cell phone until last October. It's almost been a year since I've had my cell phone. Mm. I have not. I've, I've been. I've, I avoided technology uh, for a really long time. And then when my book was coming out, I knew that I'd have to promote it. So mm. I started building a platform, as they say. And I joined Facebook and joined Twitter, and um, and then this cake. For, this cake for party became quite popular and successful. And suddenly I was on CTV and uh, everywhere, CBC, and, mm -hmm. and I, I was a lot more accessible, mm -hmm. which is great, but I couldn't keep up that same, I mean, never mind just day-to-day -day, like inbox processing. Being able to write something yeah. new and um, maintain that size of the community became um, unsustainable for me, mm -hmm. but luckily, I have Twitter, and I have my website, mm -hmm. and I have my ma my newsletter list, and I have like mm -hmm. all of these incredibly functional forms of staying in touch with people in a real way, like not just faking it to be to promote things, but actually connect with people, even though I can't do it all in person all the time. Mm -hmm. So Twitter has been amazing that way. I mean, I I underestimated Twitter. I think a lot of people still underestimate Twitter and um, and the real connections you can make through mm -hmm. through Twitter and. What I'm doing is just tweeting a writing prompt every day. So um, mm -hmm. you can hashtag write what you want to read, which is W W Y R. No, what? Write what you W W W Y W R E A D, and and find all of those tweets, and that just gets that gets people writing every day, and people are actually using them mm -hmm. and writing them and responding to me, and like it's actually. Helping, which is wonderful. I mean, it's wonderful that I can just send one out a day, and and um, it's like having people in my living room where I'm telling them to write things, but people are actually doing it. So that's just an answer to your question. I'm sorry. No, it's good. It's good because <laughs> I, I was I didn't even mention Twitter in my question, so I'm glad. And I was gonna, I had a note down in my notes here, so I'm glad that you came back to that because I I also feel like it's a valid form of community too, and a valid form of connection so and I think it's a, a wonderfully creative way to use it and your year of the short stories project as well like there, these are really like yeah. <laughs> simple little projects that connect people and yeah. get them excited so yeah. it's yeah. um it's, it's really it's powerful for it. people are people are ready to communicate this way and it's not uh it's not it's not all I mean you you get out of your community what you put into it and it's the same um digitally yeah. I mean it's yeah. The digital word is, is just people talking to each other. So you hook into the, communi the, the conversations you want to be having. Yeah. Yeah. And, there's, and there's ways to do that, that that can inspire creativity and nurture creativity and totally. nurture real connection too. So. Totally. I mean, I did, I do, my, my intention with the Twitter prompts and with my newsletters and everything else is, is actually to get people off their computer. <laughs> because I think, I think the community nurtures creativity, but I don't actually think that clicking and dragging and shooting off emails is nurturing the creative part of one's mind. I, I don't actually think that we all need to like get off the screen and onto the mat and onto the notebook. Like yeah. we really do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, if you can, if you're, if someone on your computer who you trust tells you get off the computer. It's <laughs> And speaking of getting off the computer, um, our time our time is up. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to I'm gonna click stop here.